From Creation Ministries International, you're listening to Creation.com's article podcast. The research and insights that give God the glory, refutes evolution, and gives you the answers to defend your faith. I'm Joseph Darnell. The following is a text meme that will show up on social media once in a while. Don't like gay marriage? Don't get one. Don't like cigarettes? Don't smoke one. Don't like abortions? Don't have one. Don't like sex? Don't do it. Don't like drugs? Don't do them. Don't like porn? Don't watch it. Don't like alcohol? Don't drink it. Don't like guns? Don't buy one. Don't like your rights taken away? Then don't take away someone else's. On the surface, this seems like a reasonable argument. The idea is that each of these items is a matter of personal choice that does not affect anyone else, so should not be curtailed. We will not spend time here discussing the criteria for establishing various laws, for example whether something does or does not hurt someone else. So without getting into whether cigarette smoke or guns can potentially harm others, let's consider abortion. This is not merely a case of personal preference, and there is no question that another human being is harmed by it. Pro-choice advocates like to frame the debate as simply a matter of choice. The argument is that a woman has a right to choose what happens to her body, and how dare anyone infringe on her personal freedoms by compelling her to do something that will have a profound impact on her life. Since it is considered to be entirely a woman's decision, Men aren't even supposed to have an opinion. But if evolution is true, can there even be freedom of choice? If our thoughts are simply the result of chemical reactions, can we trust them? Freedom to choose comes from God, who allowed us this freedom so that we could choose to love Him and do His will, not choose our own selfish desires. Let us examine the question of choice a little further. There are actually three choices at play here. Abortion Choices Written by Thomas Bailey First up, we have choice number one. The most obvious choice is whether to abort a preborn child. In contemplating this, we must acknowledge that there is another human life at stake. No one, male or female, should be allowed to choose whether to kill another human being with impunity. One of the reasons we have laws is to protect people from the harmful choices of others. Consider also that the aborted child does not get a choice, and roughly half of them are female. It's ironic that our culture finds it necessary to prohibit smoking in public places to protect others from secondhand smoke, but will not protect a preborn child from abortion. There are even warnings on cigarette packs to indicate smoking may harm the baby. Should we put such warnings on abortion clinics? I wonder. It used to be argued that the preborn child is not a human being. Heichel's fraudulent embryo drawings were sometimes used to support this argument, suggesting the fetus went through evolutionary changes of development, for example fish and reptile, and was therefore not yet human. Sometimes a fetus was referred to as a cluster of cells or lump of flesh. Well, 4D ultrasound technology has proven these ideas false. Also, a person has his or her own unique DNA from the very first cell, which means there is a unique human being at every stage from conception to death. Embryonic research has completely debunked the idea that humans during development retrace evolutionary stages. But it's still in textbooks. Some argue that, although the fetus is not a part of the woman's body, she still has the right to abort the child because the child is inside her body. But scripture teaches us the preborn child is worthy of consideration as a distinct human being. Read Exodus 21, 22 through 23. The Bible tells us we are fearfully and wonderfully made. In fact, we are made in the image of God, which is why murder is so serious. Killing someone means destroying that image. Scripture indicates that a preborn child is considered human while still in the womb. Consider Rebecca's twin sons, who struggle together within her, 
referred to by God as two nations in her womb. Genesis 25, 22-23 In Luke 1, 24, the baby in Elizabeth's womb leaps for joy when Mary arrives carrying the preborn Jesus. The word used for baby here in the Greek also is used to refer to baby Jesus in Luke 2, verse 12. Clearly, children in the womb are as important to God as those already born. An addition to the memes list looks something like, Don't want a baby? Don't do the thing that makes babies. Having sex without birth control includes the risk of pregnancy, but contraceptives are not 100% effective either. The only 100% effective method of preventing conception is abstinence. In any other scenario, one must acknowledge the possibility of pregnancy. Just as driving a car while impaired carries with it the risk of hurting someone, regardless of the driver's intentions. Just as one ought to make plans not to drive even before starting to drink, one ought to consider all of the possible implications of having sex. The debate really circulates around a person's freedom to have sex without taking responsibility for one of the potential outcomes of the act. When God made them male and female to become one flesh, this involved a commitment to one another and any resulting offspring. In fact, be fruitful and multiply. Can you imagine how people might operate differently in our culture if they lived by this standard? A variation on the meme would look something like, Your religion dictates what you can't do, but it doesn't dictate what others can't do. In other words, your religion has nothing to do with reality, which affects everyone. It is just a personal opinion, so keep your religion and morals to yourself. This line of thinking ignores the fact that religion, or Christianity at least, compels believers to protect the helpless. No one has an issue with protecting children from abusive parents or the marginalized from discrimination and bullying. So how much more should we protect the preborn from murder? But if evolution is true, why bother caring for anyone else? If there is no God, there is no objective morality, so we can do whatever we want. If it feels good, do it. And if hurting others helps your lineage survive, for example lying, go ahead. Some evolutionists have even suggested that rape is justifiable. Evolution is not about personal survival, but survival of the species. The one who has the most offspring wins. Ironically, abortion runs counter to that. Rape is often cited as justification for abortion. Why should a woman who has been raped be forced to give birth to the rapist's child? Rape is a heinous act condemned by scripture, Deuteronomy 22:25 and 28 through 29. But as you've probably heard, two wrongs don't make a right. I know of no other scenario in which it is considered acceptable to retaliate against an innocent third party for a wrong that has been committed. We rarely hear of someone getting mugged and then stealing the neighbor's car to retaliate against the mugger. This brings us to the third choice, and for this, I will pose a hypothetical scenario. Suppose a woman finds out that she is pregnant. Pro-choice advocates would assert that she alone has the choice to abort or not, as it is her body. Suppose she decides to keep the baby, or at least carry it to term. Now, an extraordinary thing tends to happen. Over the next several months, that woman is likely to make choices she wouldn't have made previously. If she drinks or smokes, studies indicate that she's likely to stop doing so during pregnancy. Studies also indicate she will probably choose a healthier diet. Many in our culture would probably encourage such choices. One could argue that these are all beneficial to the woman's health, but why make these changes now? And if it is her body, what right do we have to advise her anyway? The truth is, this woman is now more likely to make choices that take her preborn child into consideration, but that same child was not worthy of consideration when deciding whether to abort. What changed? All that has changed is how the woman thinks about her child. He or she is no longer an impersonal clump of cells or a fish, but a human being. She may even be thinking of potential names, a key decision every pregnant woman has to make is whether or not the child is human, and therefore, worthy of her esteem. In most cases, once the child is deemed human, 
letting the child live becomes a no-brainer. And there are those who claim that the child may be human, but is not a person. The distinction between personhood and humanity is rather fuzzy. But why even make such a distinction unless it is to justify what would otherwise be an unthinkable act? Denying personhood to certain people has historically led to terrible atrocities, such as slavery and the Holocaust. God alone is creator and God alone determines our worth. Preborn children are made in His image from the very first cell and are loved by Him. They are not to be dismissed as objects of personal choice. Advances in science, along with mankind's depraved nature, can lead to a world of evil. And just when we think that the worst is behind us, someone gets a dark and insidious idea to use technology, modern medicine, and other innovations for another immoral purpose. What's to stop unbelievers exploiting modern marvels of science for their own benefit? And why shouldn't they mandate that citizens of every country yield to the dictates of evolutionists? Because we all face challenging ethical problems, CMI offers the video presentation Bioethics, featuring Dr. Jonathan Sarfati. With his usual clarity, Dr. Sarfati shows how controversial ethical issues can be resolved if God's word, especially Genesis, is understood properly. His talk covers topics such as animal welfare versus animal rights, eugenics and euthanasia, abortion, cloning and stem cells, and many other concerns. Dr. Sarfati reveals the ethical horrors resulting from an evolutionary worldview. If you or someone you know needs answers to serious bioethics problems, get and watch the presentation simply titled Bioethics, available at creation.com slash store. A link to the video is available in the show notes. For everyone at creation.com, thanks for listening.